I'm Chris. Yes, that's that's Telly. That's I am Telly. This that's, is Mitch. Angle. This <laughs> is Mitch. <laughs> no, Telly. Yeah, What's there you go. What's going uh, on? We are live. Whoa. I'm Chris. All right, we are live. Yes. Oh, crazy. I can hear. Oh. Yeah, that's I can so hear you. I can hear your uh, delay. Oh my god! <laughs> no, that yeah, that right. Turn your volume down. Your delay is brutal. <laughs> is that me? We have five. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's not me because I have my. Uh, this, got it. Uh, you got. Oh, there we go. All I right. have another tab open that I didn't see. <laughs> my bad. All right. Oh yeah. There we go. We had some technical difficulties. Oh, just in case you guys didn't know, there's a slight delay from the live to <laughs> what the we're doing. broadcast. Okay, That's then. Right. Anyway, guys, right. we have Mitch DeBoer. Wrong way. CEO of Mosaic Manufacturing. We are so excited to have Mitch here as our first guest. And um, right. especially where now uh, Mosaic just brought out Palette 2S and Palette 2S Plus and the Canvas Hub S. And we're going to let Mitch tell us about those, but not right now. Let's let him introduce himself and tell us a little bit about himself first. So many S's to talk about. I know. Yeah, the timing is crazy. So excited to be the first guest. Thank you for having me, guys. Um, yeah, so uh, like you said, I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO right now of Mosaic Manufacturing. We're uh, up here in, in Canada, in Toronto. Um, we founded Mosaic five years ago, right out of school, actually. We're now about 25 people, all Canadians, all on brand. Uh, Chris, I know you were out at our office a few months ago. You got to see the space and meet some of the people. Oh, I've been there. That, that was like my third or fourth time at that new office. I've been to the old office, too. Yes, correct. And you brought us a really sweet. I didn't know you. That. I didn't get to meet you that time. I was there. But um, yeah, I uh, so much to tell. So um, I'll leave it there for now. And uh, I know that we've got some product to show and lots of sort of questions to answer. So some yeah. stuff. Let me uh, bust out my list of questions here. So I know you and I talked about this a little bit the other day. Um, and I know the story, but I don't think many people do. How did Mosaic actually become a company and more from what you started to Palette? Yeah, yeah. So I'll give you the kind of three minute version because this could be like a three day story. Oh, and let me know if you want any more detail about a, a specific there. Um, so I was studying mechanical engineering and material science and was super interested in 3D printing. This is six, seven years ago. Make Magazine came out and you saw top 10 3D printers. And like I'm sure a lot of us looked at it. That's and saw, right. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, that's right. You know, like $800? I can save up for that. It'll take a while. But right? And you, you order one and it's like a three-month lead time, which really is six months. So I thought it was really cool. I bought one. And I was at this summer job. And... I, for the first time, saw how powerful 3D printing can really be. I was working on a project. My boss had this idea, and I thought to myself, I'm going to go home, build that thing, bring it, show it to him, and I could because I had a printer. Otherwise, I would have had to have CNC machined it or modeled it. So the That's next right. day, I got him this part, right? I showed it to him, and um, and he was blown away. And that summer, he made me the project lead on this new thing, he gave me a promotion, and I was like, oh, my God, this is insane. So that was my, like – big moment discovering how powerful 3D printing can be as a communication tool. And then um, I went back to school, to university, and I saw that, you know, no one knew what a 3D printer was. And on campus, there was one big Stratasys dimension printer that no one had access to. And even if you did, it was so expensive to use. So I, I, bought, I took my 3D printer, I started a, bit, a website on Wix, and people started ordering stuff from me. Nice. You know, classic, yeah. And it's funny. Yeah, yeah. To this day, I don't think many people knew that they were buying stuff from like a 19-year-old student. Um, my <laughs> website looked pretty professional, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I use Wix. Yeah. Well, I always love I always love to hear stories like this because I find like in the 3D printing industry, no one started in the 3D printing industry. They always came from somewhere else. Yeah. I was I was a graphic designer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So okay. So here I am. 
I've got this website, I'm still, I'm busy studying and I've got these orders coming through and they're kind of like 30, 40, $50 orders. And then one day I get a, um, a lead from General Motors, big automotive company, right? And they're, nice, yeah. and, and then it's growing. They're kind of like putting in an order every month. And I remember there's this one order specifically, it was part of an eyewash station in the factory. And uh, it was a $300 order. It was like the biggest part I could print. And they said, okay, you know, we're ready to do the part, but it's got to be three colors. And I said, oh, why? And they had a pretty good answer. They said, for safety compliance, it needs to have this symbol on it, and it generally needs to be green. And that I makes said, sense. Okay. Right? That makes sense. Um, only oh. problem is, can't do that. So I said, yeah. oh, I can glue it together, or I can go get a quote from another. But they said, no, 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 it's got to be plastic. It can't be like sandstone or polyjet. It's got to be plastic. Gotcha. Right, so it was really stuck there, and they didn't care for that. They're just like, "Look, you're you're the printing person, do it." And so um, I, I said, "I can't." They said, "I'll pay you ten times as much," and I said, three thousand dollars for one part." Like, oh my god! But yeah. unfortunately, I couldn't do it. There was no way. Um, at the time, Derek, who's now our CTO, and I were working on some projects together, and we applied to a startup incubator at Queen's University. Um, the QIC incubator, and we were working on something different. It was this camera robot piece of technology. It was cool. Um, okay. It's crazy looking back to think that, like that was just some random, random side project, but Derek and I took the plunge and went into that incubator. And in that incubator, we met who is now our COO, Chris, and two of our other co-founders, Danny and Heather, and the five of us started at the time what was called, uh, it was not called Mosaic Manufacturing. I think we all liked avocados. So we called it Ovacoda. Okay. <laughs> um, and long story short to end there, we went into this summer trying to build this camera robot, but not everyone was as excited about that. And we started going around saying, what other problems are people aware of? And I said, guys, like, I don't know how the heck we would solve this, but it seems really crazy that 3D printers have been around for at the time 25 years. And yeah, yet that's right. of them are printing in a single color. Um, so it all started with a problem, not a solution. It was like the problem Clearly, someone's willing to pay $3,000 for this part, 10 times more if it's in color. Why is it not being done? Why are dual extruders not taking off? And that was the like painful, painful problem that we identified that led to the founding of Mosaic. So I'll stop there. Um, does that all make sense? Yeah. Yeah, no, that totally actually makes sense. Yeah, no, that's great. I love that yeah. story. I, yeah, no, it's great. No, no, no. Because I love like when, you know, like that once again, like I said before is, the different variables that where everyone comes from in 3d printing but they usually come from like to try to solve a problem yes all right all right so Let's do we want to jump on. right into other stuff do we is it time to start hammering mitch with the questions are you ready come out no. all right so these yeah. are pretty easy ones and i'm sure you've you, you you're totally prepared to answer them um so now launch of palette 2s palette 2s pro canvas hub s that's really exciting yes mine mine still isn't here no yeah <laughs> it's uh, uh, you know no i know they told me that what happened in the for the u.s distribution the thing with doesn't it just suck though like think about yeah, you know, four years ago we're kickstarting and like the idea of deliveries, this insane thing, there's like so much risk. I know. You haven't built the product yet. And so, of course, like every other company, unfortunately, you know, we're proud that we weren't that delayed, but we shipped a great product when we got it out. Now we, we have a team working on this. We're, we're, we're doing as best we can to de-risk things and test them and bring them into the U.S. in advance. And everything is lined up. Like it, it's ready. It's like, we have all, everything is ready to ship. Oh, we just can't ship it yet. Sorry. Exactly. I know. What a pain. But I mean, it's exciting. So I mean, I have uh, I have Palette Plus. I have several Palette Twos. I have a Palette Two Pro. Um, tell what? Tell other people because I know people that are watching right now own Palette in yeah. some iteration. Yeah. What are the major difference slash upgrades between Palette yeah. Two and Palette Two S? Right. Yeah. So, and even jumping back, so, you know, Palette was the first Kickstarter project. That was the, the white metal box and that thing spliced film. And Chris, I know you were printing something today with it. Yeah, it that's it's a, a plus. It's a tank, the Palette Plus. 
Oh yeah, um, it, it is a tank. Yeah, pallet it's two. Heavy. It's very it, it, people don't believe when they see a pallet. You kind of expect it's like a I don't know. Like you think it's this form factor? No, it's heavy. Yeah, yeah. It's well, that's what I'm saying. People think it's going to be light. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but it's funny because the heavy components of a 3D printer, almost every single one of them is in pallet. Like you've got a ton of stepper motors and your PCBs and your power supply and all that. So anyhow, pallets are heavy. Um, so the first few years of the company, we were building pallet, pallet plus, but we identified pretty early on, um, we really need to find a way to scale this up to bring the cost down so more people can have access to it to make it a lot more reliable, redesign certain systems. So we had this team in parallel. They were kind of like in one corner of the office and they were the Palette 2 team. Um, and so Palette 2 is in development for a really long time. And we launched that last summer. We're incredibly proud of it. It was the real Gen 2. Because you know, with Gen 1 of a product, you can tweak and do your best. But when you move on to Gen 2, you have the opportunity to take everything you've learned, throw certain things out the window, really start, um, you know, go back to basics on certain yeah. designs. Yeah, so. in Gen 2, there should be some innovations. Right. Yeah. And you couldn't keep those in stock. No, exactly. They, they, yeah, no, I remember. Were, yeah, you guys were selling them out like crazy. They were just sold out. Right, yeah, that was right, right, right. right. And, and then so, we have yeah. the ability to, to manufacture at a higher scale, which, which is, these are all good things, right? And the reliability of the product went up like crazy, which means more people are using it, more people are posting. Canvas came out, made it even easier for people to print with it. So all that good stuff was happening. We didn't want to jump into a Pallet 5, um, you know? Yeah, yeah. We really yeah. wanted, but there were things that we learned. You know, thank God, knock on wood, there was no major catastrophic issues or anything. But gotcha, yeah. we wanted, to print a little bit faster, the thumb screws would wear out sometimes on too many people's units. You know, if it's more than a couple percent, that's too many people to us. So yes, that's right. Right. Things like that. Um, of course, the firmware we keep making better. Uh, I love the firmware updater, by the way. I love it. Um, it's well, just, the thing too is when you start both machines. machines. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. Go um, ahead. So their firmware updater. So I have, you know, two palette twos and a palette two pro in the room right there. And I love that I have my laptop on a cart <laughs> and I can legitimately have a cable and I wa I just yeah. watch the updater and I walk over and I plug it into one and I say, Oh, update done. It pulls the proper firmware for that unit, whether it's the pro or the non pro. Yeah. That update is nice. Firmware. Yeah. Done. Great. Unplug. Walk right over the next one, plug it in. Same thing. Same and firmware. That's yeah, that's really right. An yeah, amazing yeah. job with that. Like I love that. I'm See, sorry. I honestly like. I honestly like what you just said. Like literally to the the screws you're using, you realize that they're wearing down, and even at one to two percent, that's not enough. That's not good enough for you guys. Like, no, sorry. Okay, we will make changes in that, and that's amazing. Yeah, so that that was that was the philosophy. It was like, this we're we're proud of this product, but let's listen to customers. Let's let's collect that data. Let's look at the things that are you know. There's always one-off anomalies. A screen is cracked, or the, the box was like slightly damaged. But we want to look for trends. There's always random things. Yeah. Well, those things you have to expect them. And it, honestly, it really burns me. Like it really makes me angry that people get so upset about these things. It's like, it's a machine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I look at it as like it's a tool. It's a tool. And put it in a box. And I don't know if everybody, I don't know if Telly's even seen the painful care you guys go into, like go through to package this. Oh, no, product. I've seen the, on your guys' it's, Instagram, I've seen you guys go funny. through craziness to pack those things. You know? It's ridiculous. So, I mean, for that to get damaged in shipping, it's not like it's not going to happen. But I mean, I would feel the the UPS delivery guy really has to <laughs> chuck that thing to really hurt it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know? we've all seen the YouTube videos of UPS oh, yeah. guys, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've actually yeah. seen that. And that's that's a hard thing, as as you know, we have to figure out. We have to distinguish what is like a really bad UPS driver versus an actual issue, right? And jump on okay. these things. And so after like a year, or at the time, I guess six months of data, we could, we we sat down as a as a product team and said. You know, how do, how do we make what's what's already what we're proud of what's good? How do we make it better? Um, and uh, that that led to kind of like six, seven. Sorry, twelve inputs. 
12 <laughs> We should we should have a conversation about what should be next. I think that's that's a fun topic. Um, I have a list of things I'd love to see next. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, to finish answering your question, so with Palette Two S, it was really a true refinement on Palette Two. We didn't gotcha. want people to feel this pressure like they need to throw their Palette Two out and buy a new one. People invest a lot of money in Palette. We appreciate that. So in fact, we went so far as to create an upgrade path. So I was just um, gonna say, yeah, I have which upgrades. is nice, which is really nice. The, that was important. I uh, talked to Johnny. I've got upgrades on. I'm actually, I was really bummed. I was going to go pick them up because I had them shipped to my PO box in Buffalo. Nice. And I was going to go pick them up today ah. and have them the one to show for the show. Um, but, you know, customs. Good delay. Um, yeah. little which delay. honestly, which honestly, talking about your engineer background and your other, it really kind of shows your thinking behind it that even now, there's upgrade packages that will just, it, it, it's that diverse. Yeah. And the, honestly, a thing that's really big for me in that whole thing with Mosaic, like supporting Mosaic the way I do, that to me, it just absolutely proves that every time I tell somebody, you need palette, you need palette, yeah. you, you know, you need that's this. True. It yeah. always, seeing Mosaic as a company, say, hey, you know what? We just launched this product a year ago. We don't want to make people feel bad and not, and say, oh, well, sorry. I know you just bought that, you know, six months yeah. ago. You didn't get the full ago. package, yeah. We're going to get, we have this upgrade kit. We're going to make this just as good, except yeah. for the cover. You know, and the only difference on the cover is there's an S. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll, right. You know what? You I'll paint an S I'll on it if you want. In four colors. Yeah. <laughs> if I really want to. You yeah. know, that just, it just renews like the amount of support that I like to show to Mosaic by seeing all the things that you guys do. And Thank you. everybody in your office, I have to say, like the amount of times I've been there is fantastic. I had a problem. I don't even know if I told you this, but um, I was trying to figure something out yesterday in Canvas and I was like, I'd never done it before and I didn't even know it was there. <laughs> and I was like, I, I, maybe I'm old. I don't know. Why am I not understanding this? And I messaged Addy and I was like, would you jump in a video chat with me for like two minutes? And she was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> she jumped on. I showed her what I was trying to do. And she was like, oh yeah, it's just this, 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 and this. Bang. Done. No companies do that for their customers. Yeah, no companies do that. I know, right? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Just, that just brings you guys up here. You know, you can't even see my hand. Look. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me happy to hear. I, I'm glad that. But um, it's true, though, Mitch. Yeah. I mean, I'm not blowing. I mean, you know me. Uh, I'm not blowing smoke. If there was something bad, I would tell you too. And I would tell yeah. you live on camera. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. And you know, the thing I like, I think the thing I like is about honestly. I don't have a palette, but I've been following you guys right from the beginning to see what you're doing. That's just kind of my job, you know what I mean? To see what's going on in the industry and stuff. Yeah. And your openness always has been number one, right from this Kickstarter from on into here it is. You guys have been so honest and open. Like, yeah, okay, we, we heard you. Okay, that sucked. <laughs> now we're fixing it. You, you know, but be honest, right? You know, and that's the way you guys always did it. And to me, you just don't... You don't see that a lot, you know? You don't see it. I feel like Telly's working for S.H.I.E.L.D. because he has that earwig in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. FBI, man. Yeah. He, works for, he works for S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, no, I appreciate that, guys. And that's, you know, it's, it's as the company grows, instilling those values in, in the team is, is something that, you know, we, we focus on. Um, and to double down on one thing with the, uh, it's funny, with the upgrade kit, um, you look at it and you might think, oh, you know, put some put some things in a box and, you know, made a new splice core, a few weeks of work. They're probably working on the, the next, like, oh my God, no. The, Knowing the, what's the in the body body body. Body. No way. You're, you're not, you're not Apple. You're not looking at the S3 or two, five or six. Or <laughs> no, planning in advance. No, like this is several people, several engineers and, and, and um, uh, people on, on the team working on the upgrade. Uh, on all these parts, on because right, anytime we release something, that means we go back to the drawing board on endurance testing. Right, yeah. Start again, yeah. show that you didn't change anything 
uh, or that making things better didn't, you know, inadvertently cause an issue to, to go, you know, something to go worse. And we released endurance mode recently. Now we have to test that with Pal2, Pal2 Pro with the new S's. So um, anytime we do something, because there are so many thousand pallets out there now, we have to be careful. Um, and so there's so much work that goes into this. One little one that I think you might appreciate that I'm not sure if, uh, if Chris, you're aware of based on your explaining the difference before. Um, the the top cover is really the only aesthetic thing that would be different between the Palette 2 and the Palette 2S. Right. Um, but the odd time, someone will be updating firmware on a palette, and if something goes wrong, it can sort of brick their screen. Oh, yeah. Isn't there a reset button now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have to take the bottom off, and we felt that that was so painful that we actually wanted to change the, the PCB and palette so that it now has a, a reset button that's accessible from the top. And that's something like most people will never know or see, but for just to reset the screen. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> that happened to me on one of mine. I think my palette two. And how annoying was it? Oh, it was annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> but let me tell you, I had to change the tray in my palette plus. The real OG. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> coming from. I mean, I have a super tech background. I don't know if anybody really knows this about me, but. I was actually, um, I worked in high tech in Boston. Um, I was director of technology at a college. And then I also ran uh, the research computing division okay. uh, in Mass General Hospital. So wow. I, I kind of knew my way around things. And when I was like, Johnny sent me the tray and I was like, what is this and where does it go? Oh my God. <laughs> it was, that was crazy. Does like they tell you the tray is basically like the entire like electronic guts of Palette Plus. <laughs> so now I want I want to ask because I see a lot of people when they talk about the palette and with you know, with the system that it's a learning system. You almost have to train it. And I know some people might complain about that, but for me, I've always been with the the thing that. 3D printer and stuff is a tool. You need to learn how to use it. You yep. know what I mean? And, all, and not only that, you need training on how to do it. Uh, so maybe you could talk a little bit about how the, the configuration and how you do use it like a tool and it learns what you're doing. Absolutely, yeah. That was something new that came with Palette 2 as well. So really, if we, if we think about what Palette is doing, it's slicing together filaments to create a single strand. And we've, pre we've predetermined how long each section of each material needs to be to figure out the volume. So when it's extruded through that nozzle, we can predictively put the right amount of red in a region and white in a region. Um, so we do that as best we can. But there's a variety of areas in the system where there's error, where things aren't perfect. And that's okay if you're just doing one layer, but for some of the prints where they're like two days long and they have thousands of color changes, we need to make sure that we're accounting for any of that air. And we're talking about like humidity changes in the room. So your PLA is exactly. harder. Environmental then, stuff is the biggest for any, you know, people say, well, why is there so much change? Yeah. Well, listen, I literally, when I, when I was living on in, in Alberta and I yeah. came here, I had to change all my settings. Not surprising, right? Like, I change um, my settings when it gets cold, like right now, like winter starting. Yeah, that's it. I have to change yeah. settings. Have you guys noticed that your PLA just gets brittle in the winter? Oh, totally. I have For a sure. Dryer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well I do too, but that's not the point. But I know yeah. you're. <laughs> but oh yeah, it totally does. Yeah. So anyhow, so think about <laughs> humidity changes, even printer to printer, they're not calibrated to the same temperature because there's exactly the beat, right. So, um, you know. There's so many things which can affect the rheology of the way the plastic melts and the way it's used. Palette needs to account for that. So the first print you do, you do a calibration print and you're teaching the palette two things. You don't have to go into necessarily what they are unless we want to, but you're, you're teaching palette two things. Show you a calibration print. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Oh, there that was a nice one. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I did this. So I know you know, but the people who are watching don't know. Um, yeah. We do have a live palette cam that's happening in back there, which is why the door is shut. Um, yeah. And I completely recalibrated uh, Palette 2 Pro to work on my Raptor 2. 
and this was my calibration print and i have to say knowing what these are supposed to look like this came out pretty stinking good yeah no right so you you trained your palette based on that and i, I want to answer mark's question at the same time about do you need to do i see that mark l baker's question yeah so do yeah you, please do answer you, that yeah 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 so so no you don't but we recommend it i'll explain why so your first print you need to start the print and finish the print and then palette learns. It says, okay, if I thought that the effective extrusion multiplier was supposed to be, you know, 0.98 or 98%, I see that the printer is actually printing at 96%. So it'll make that correction. On the keychain, you actually won't even notice that. Palette was able to figure that out because of a really precise sensor inside of it. The keychain looks pretty good. So we like the keychain because it's a 40 minute print. It doesn't take that long. It doesn't use that much material, but it's just enough for palette to learn. Also, it's a standard thing. So if you have an issue and you talk to our customer success team, they'll say, hey, send us a picture. And by looking at the bottom of that print, we can diagnose potentially what happens sometimes. Whereas if you print a, 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 another random print, it can be really confusing. Yeah, yeah. There's so many things that could be going on. So you do not need to print the keychain. You could print, for example, you know, uh, a dog or, or a, a Marvel character, but the print needs to finish for the calibration values to save. So if you print a 12 hour print and then it fails at the 11th hour because you run out of filament or something goes wrong, it's a real waste because Palette will know nothing. Palette will only save. It, yeah, it's not taking that information. Exactly. So you yeah, do not yeah. need to do the keychain. You could do another small print if you'd like, um, but it's, it's just taking on more risk and it makes it a little more challenging to troubleshoot. So we always recommend it. Um, but you do not have to print it. And that was kind of my point is when I see some people kind of like, and not so much complain, but say, oh, well, I got to teach it. Well, that's a good thing because it will learn from each printer because I know I have 25 printers, okay? Not every printer has the same settings. They don't have the same e-steps. They don't push out the same amount of plastic. And if the palette can learn each of those machines, yeah, that's a bonus, not a negative. Very good point. Good point that like, so each printer, even if you have five of the same printer, they're not actually That's right. Because we're talking about things like 1% of E-step being off can have an impact here. Um, and if it Big isn't, time. if we're not making this clear to people, by the way, too, Palette is doing the work for you. So you That's don't right. have to yeah. look at it, like take calipers. It's figuring this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it just it out and says, Hey, this yeah. print is done. Did it complete? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look You're not calibrating some right. e steps with this caliper. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. And um, I mean, and especially for like somebody like me. So in the other room, I have um, Palette 2 Pro and I have it in between two machines. I have my Raptor 2 on one side, Palette 2 Pro in the middle, and my uh, CR 10S5 to the right of it. Right. And I just literally plug and unplug depending on which printer I want to use. It over, yeah. And palette has all the different profiles, so it knows, and it automatically says, "Oh, oh, I know what printer I'm using. Here we go. I'll just use these stored settings." And like, see, that's absolutely. amazing. That that that's the thing right there. What people, if when they look at it and they they're like, "Oh, well, I got to tune and stuff." That's that's the whole point. Isn't that the whole point? Yeah. It re and it remembers, and because I use Canvas Hot, well, I use. I use homemade canvas hubs, which yeah. is another amazing thing. Oh. The fact that you guys make this product, Canvas Hub, and now Canvas Hub S, and you could be like, hey, here's our $99 product. Here, just buy it. You have to use it. But you didn't. You released plugins for Octoprint that anybody can download and install on their existing Octoprint instances and use full connected mode with palette and that and that is just another amazing thing for me it really is because you're not trying to nickel and dime people and uh, you know that's you know, I, I don't know if that's the right term but you know that's really what it yeah, is it's you know hey we could sell you this 99 dollars product and say it has to that's work right you know 99 us dollars for those of us in canada that's like a, that's like 500 canadian that's like right. that's like 600 dollars no. um yeah but yeah. you know just the fact that you guys think about all, you think about your customers so much more than any other company that I've ever seen. Like, well, it, and the great, and once again, because it's like you have your own system, but it's not proprietary because it works with every goddamn printer. You, you know <laughs> what I mean? And I'm not trying to talk about 
Prusa and MMAU. I'm not trying to hate on those guys, right? That's not what I'm saying here. But your system not proprietary. You have your system, but it works on anything. Yeah. And that's they, a big thing. So many people ask me, well, you know, would you buy like a Prusa with an MMU2 or would you buy Palette? And I'm like, honestly? Yeah. I, I have four. four. <laughs> Why? Because if this printer breaks, I just pick up Palette, move it over here, and I'm back in four color business. Well, and honestly, that's like my thing, okay? I have 25 printers, okay? Now, I might not need multi-color printing on every single one, but I might need one on this one job. Yeah. I hook it up. It gets done. It, 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 it's not it's not one printer, you know? And at the same time, okay, I have this free printer open right now because all my other printers are doing jobs. I could just put that in there, and it's going to just pump it out. 100%. Yeah, I have two of my palettes connected in between two printers. So Palette 2 Pro is between my Raptor 2 and my S5. And my first Palette 2 um, is between my S4 and uh, my Chiron. Right. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, nice big build volumes on all of them. The smallest one is 400 by 400. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> smallest that's crazy no, that's awesome. yeah i know smallest. isn't that crazy nowadays when we talk like oh you know oh, 300 by 400 by this like really man like well, I mean, I have, kind of, it was like I 100 by 100 of, by 100 plates right yeah well i have my <laughs> army of mega s's in the other room yeah yeah you know yeah, but yeah. I mean, for the fun stuff i mean mitch you know very well like all of the clocks and stuff i mean those don't fit on a small printer exactly you know well, like, the mosaic clock is giant yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I have, I think we showed on our first stream. I have some clocks I designed and same thing. And you know, I have a, I have a couple, uh, uh, a big freaking uh, like literally three foot, four foot uh, deltas, a bunch <laughs> of them, right? But they just print nice and tall, right? <laughs> That's yeah. it. Um. All right. Let's see. What we got going on here? What's everyone saying? What did we got? Questions? We got no questions yet. Yeah. Except for Mark, and we answered that. Oh, All right. Oh, Mark said it. Yeah, he appreciate it. Right on. So oh, good deal. The upgrade kits. I'm assuming they're pretty easy to install. They are. Yeah. It. Uh, it's, everything uses one screwdriver. Same one we already gave, but we give another one just in case you lost it. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of those now. Yeah. The so just in case you didn't have one, you include one in the package. Yeah. You want to fill nice. everyone's homes with mosaic screwdrivers. I, have little... a lot of... I love the new ones that actually say mosaic on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about the little details. So the kit is, um, it would take you five minutes, um, but not everyone's as skilled necessarily. So I say it'll take most people 10 minutes, maybe 20 Got minutes. You. That's right. You're, you're swapping out the five drive arms. It's one screw each, putting the spring in. You're using the thumb screw for the splice core, putting in the new splice core. You're going to update your firmware. You're going to the, the limit switch is new too. Yep. Is so right? uh, limit switch, um, minor improvements for the homing switch, and then the updated LED colors. So that's taking off the homing cover, unplugging the switch, putting in the new one, closing it, and then the runout switches. No updates there, but the LED color effectively, um, just in case you really want to, you know, be the full S experience effectively, and you've got extra space. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, when you say update the firmware, what is that process too? Just for some people that don't know, because they might think, oh, it's this crazy thing. I'm not a techie person to update the firmware, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So we try to make that as easy as possible. There's a USB cable. It's kind of like updating your iPhone or your, your Android. You plug the phone into your computer. You go to our website. You hit a page. Um, it downloads this updater. You hit download latest. And it just automatically sends the latest firmware over to Palette. It'll take about 10 minutes. So it'll do it itself. And it upgrades everything to the new experience. Um, it, it gives you new features. And we recommend people do that every every few months because we have a team at Mosaic that's constantly improving. Um, you guys are always putting out little, uh, not little, but you know, updates all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And another great thing about their firmware updater or when you update firmware on Palette in general, it doesn't reset everything to zero it remembers wow. i was just going to ask that it remembers that's great it re really yep so that's it awesome. pushes all the new like the, the new like under the hood stuff that's right all of your stuff that you had all of your settings like because you can go through splice tuning 
um, to get those perfect splices that yeah. they're, they're the perfect diameter, you can spend a long time. You could play. Yeah, yeah. I, I know I've talked to you and you're like, I'm just trying to pump this in for this one. And not even that, just if you like the print before, but you're like this one print, I want this to work perfect. Right? Yeah. Um, so let's talk about material a little bit. Yeah, I yeah actually that. that's a great idea. That's a great um, idea. You're going to bring it up? I was going to bring it up because Telly said, you know, on my um, on all my printers, I don't always need to do multicolor prints. And right. that's something but recently. Multi you know, material. Exactly. Uh, so a lot of people don't know. I'd say, you know, 90% of people, if you ask them, they'd say, oh, I don't, I don't think Palette can do that. I, I've never, I don't know. But it can. So 2020, it's going to be a big year for that. We're going to be yeah. really oh. pumping, pumping those, um, the, the support for that, um, really showing which materials. If, if people want to buy a soluble, a, a water-soluble support, um, yeah. we're going to make a couple of recommendations. We're going to do a lot of testing. It's already started. So that we can say, you know, if you if you want, go get this one, and we can tell you the splice tuning settings will be this. Here's some tips for success, and we really want to help kickstart that because it's becoming oh, clear that, especially in a lot of business applications, a lot of service bureaus, oh. jobs for people, and we all know what it's like to be limited to objects which are flat on the bottom and oh. don't have crazy support, don't have internal cavities. Uh, we're used to it because we designed. Let's just that. talk. Supports alone suck. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. if you can do water soluble or like anything like that, that you know, that just is amazing, right? Definitely, yeah. No, that um, it'll go a long way. Water soluble breakaway. I have a, a passion for breakaway support. I think that often we assume we need water soluble, but water soluble is about five times more expensive. It's so I got you. You're right. But breakaway is great because it's like the same price as PLA. And when you print, you take it away, it just peels away. I'm not talking about using PLA as support for PLA. That's I'm talking I got about you, yeah. similar material, like PETG right. or a, a PETG, yes, I know. PETG is great. You're right. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's a great support material. Yeah. All right. Let's jump a little bit. Let's do it. You guys are okay with it? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so I mentioned that we have a live palette cam. So oh, we do. Yeah, let's check it out. What's going on here? Not up. So this is actually here. I'm gonna. I'll make it big, bigger. Yeah. You zoom think. it up. Yeah. Come on. How do I do that? Like this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ah, oh, there you go. Oh, oops, nice, nice. It. This is it. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's it. No, no. So, um. This is actually my Raptor 2 and Palette 2 Pro printing nice. currently. And hang on, let me close that again. So I'm still new at this. Hey, Mitch, do you see that so, little mosaic so logo? Looks yeah, good on the video, right? You see that? Yeah, hey, it looks, it looks um, good. Yeah, yeah, no, that way. Yeah. <laughs> so what that is actually printing is this. What's going on here? Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So this is actually a model by Wexter, who is going to be our guest in just a couple. Uh, a that's few right. Days. He's certainly awesome. Yeah, he certainly will be. Um, yeah. And Great I know. He, see, he does so many multi-material of his minis that I love, he and this does, is does. one of his. He did this. Um, I'm going to say like maybe six or so months ago. Um, maybe even nine months ago, probably right about the time I started supporting him on Patreon. Um, it honestly and, makes me so jealous when I see like you just did his new John Wick and even though you were tuning it in and he did a multi, he did it on the pound. Oh, you made, I'm so jealous. I'll show you that in a second. But yeah, so this yeah. is a fantastic model. So that's what's actually printing right now. Cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let me, yeah, that's going to be a good print. print. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, would you like me to show off some palette prints? Let's see let's, it. Let's right. see it. Yeah, I'm let's do it. Zoom myself in so people can actually see them. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I don't care about there. me. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So this is another one of Wexter's models. This is his. Oh, that's so good. Tormund. Honestly, that model right there is ridiculous. I know. I love that model. <laughs> really and then is. this is one. Um, I did this when I was, when you guys were just finishing um, up 
you were just about ready to launch Canvas version two. Yeah. Um, I spent almost a week before it launched painting this. Oh, that one's yeah, amazing. I yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, and that's amazing. This is actually seven colors. So there were three filament swaps on this, um, which is another feature of palette that a lot of people don't know about. True. And when you use connected mode, wait, hold on. I don't need to be zoomed in for that. Um, <laughs> another feature, in when you use connected mode, meaning using a, a Canvas Hub or a, an Octoprint um, Pi yourself, you can actually just go right up to palette and hit the button and hit pause print, change filament. Oh, so you can do that with the Octopi yeah. plugin also. Yeah, absolutely. And it's new. It's fairly new because um, it wasn't around when it launched. Right. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, like I did it. So today when I, so I did this today, Wexter's. Oh Super yeah, Mario. that's good. Yeah, that's good. Too. But did. this is six colors. Can't do six colors yet. See yet. <laughs> See what I did there, Mitch? You're not supposed um, to talk about that. So can't do six colors, but because of the way this is designed, you can. it only needs four colors at any given time. Gotcha. So when I was doing this, I, oddly enough, though, I didn't. I did this on Palette Plus. So uh, this is on oh, old, geez. old technology <laughs> as far as the world of Palette goes. And look at this. Yeah, it looks great. It still, no, just does a cool. bang up it, job. No, I it's modeled super it cool. so that wasn't on the bottom. Oh, the but, bottom is cool though. That's it awesome. It is kind of cool. I like that. You know. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah. And then uh, I just did this, so I was calibrating my new palette two, and my first print I didn't really calibrate it well because I got Zombie John Wick instead of. Yeah. Zombie oh yeah, Wick. Zombie instead John of, Wick. That's awesome though. Instead of John Wick with actual like skin color. <laughs> That was my fault. It's but good then, though. It's cool though. I went. Oh, and did that looks Captain so Marvel. good. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. So now we're a little tuned, and then I had a the really blue, the blue and red separation on that is amazing. Actually, yeah, it's it just, really it good. Yeah. Um, but something else that Mitch and I had actually talked about the other day, I'm going to show you now. I, I kind of have a pet peeve when I hear people complain about waste. Yeah. And purge blocks. Now. Oh, if, yeah. Like your purge tower. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you are printing with multiple colors or multiple materials on a single nozzle machine, you're going to have waste. There's no That's way, the way it out. works. It, it, there's nothing you can do to instantly go from black to white. That's right. It needs to purge itself out. End of story. So you have to be prepared for that. And I am, and I know a lot of people are, and a lot of people don't care. But, you know, so I, I see people complain about it all the time, and it, just, it irritates me. So No, I hear you. I see people Captain say, oh, well, the purge block is so big. This is the purge block for Captain Marvel. It's not solid. Yeah. It's not 100% infill. That's right. Yeah, and yeah. it's almost the same height as her. It stops basic, and it's smart now. Yeah. It stops. As soon as it goes to single color, it's over. Um, Here's the thing I kind of look at it too, though. So say if you printed that and you had a failed print, all right, you already wasted all that plastic on a failed print, okay? Or three or four times. It's oh, You really have printed it twice, but at less infill. It's really not a lot of waste when you, really if you think about it that way, right? Like, I don't know how many models I print and maybe say it fails this or... You know, my printer has a problem. A block is very little compared to what you're getting in the end result. Yeah. It's, look at what you're getting. Look at what you have the capability of doing instead yeah. of thinking about, you know, that $16 kilo of PLA, you know, that you're using a, a 16th of. Stop complaining. And well, here's the thing too, which I don't think a lot of people realize. Let's talk about like the painting, right? Yeah. So where you can paint, you know. So if you could talk, you know, let little people know about. Because I don't think people realize that they think, oh, well, it has to be a multicolor setup for that way. But that's not the way it is. No. Very do you true. Wanna, do you want to fact, that, Mitch? Do you want to share your screen? I, I definitely could. I was going to say, and did or, or, or you want me painted? 
Yes, the Wonder Woman is painted. Do you want me to bring that up? I think that'd be way better than what I have. Okay. Oh, okay, all right, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. While you're getting that up, and just on the topic of waste, you know, the reality is we, we appreciate that a lot of people see the value in what they're getting and, and understanding that there's a cost to that and part of it is waste. The reality is waste doesn't help anyone. It costs money, it takes time, it takes build space. So it's gonna be a really big focus. It's, it's, we've already been working on it. There hasn't been that much that's come out yet, but in 2020, a lot of reduction. So there's a lot of things that even that we've done in our old software that we need to bring into Canvas, um, waste gotcha. that block. There's also a lot of strategies like if you print multiple parts at the same time, the block stays the same. Yeah, so that's the right. portion of waste goes down substantially. I printed yeah. two identical clocks on my S5. And yeah, my I, see clock, that. I posted a picture of it on the forum, on yeah. the Facebook group. Two giant clocks. And that totally, and and that totally makes sense clock. when you're printing multiple parts, the block doesn't change. And that, exactly. and that, and then see, that's, that, that's great thinking behind that. Yeah, and there's a lot of things like that. Um, I won't go into the weeds on it, but we have some articles that you could really substantially save that amount. And I think if we do this again in the end of next year and look back, I think we'll be laughing at the size of that block now. Really? Because, yeah. Because oh, I like it can get to hear that. smaller. Yeah, which is which is awesome, good. man. Right on. Do you yeah. want to actually answer? I know the answer, but do you want to answer Adam's question, the Mad Makery? Um, I have a T Rex. Hey, wait, hold on. I have a T Rex. Oh, there we go. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So um, I think Matt um, asking basically, can you be using each extruder on your, your T-Rex where one is going with pallet and the other is using a different material? Uh, in theory, there is no reason that can't happen. We just haven't built that feature yet. Uh, so for now, what you would do is you would use one. And like we were just talking about, you could do three colors, let's say of PTG or, or PLA, and your fourth color or your fourth filament could be soluble. Um, gotcha. Or you could do three colors of PLA and make your fourth material PTG, which Actually, is a great yeah, base right. material because it doesn't stick to PLA, although it sticks well enough to print. Um, so you can just achieve that same goal that you have of, of using the, each extruder on your T-Rex. Just do it with one extruder with pallet. Uh, and for now, that's what you can do. Well, I don't think we have an official date on that yet, but we'll hope to support that. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Um, I saw a couple nice. other questions up here as well. Yeah, uh, Mark, John's here. Yeah, John, yeah. Canvas Local. Okay, so I think he's referring to Canvas that would be local to your computer. Like, like Chroma. Kind of, and I know the uh, answer, but yeah, go yeah, ahead. Non-cloud, no, yeah, yeah, go no, ahead. Yeah, so we have two software solutions. One is called Chroma, um, which actually we can answer Mark L's question at the same time with this. So Mark is asking, Canvas, Chroma, S3D um, for prints. So one of the reasons we created Canvas is to create the easiest experience possible. And when we think about the future, the future roadmap of where Canvas goes, uh, it's critical that we have that connectivity. The same way a lot of the applications that we use as consumers today, from Netflix or in business to Slack, Google Drives, think about a Google Sheet versus a Microsoft Word document. Um, yeah, like, oh, right. We really won't be able to go back. And there's so many areas that we want to go with Canvas, um, machine learning to make your prints better, automating some of the decisions that we make, uh, looking at feedback from prints that have been printed to optimize your slicer setting. And I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think that's an important part, machine learning, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's that term right there is a very important thing not just to pass over, machine learning, right? Like yeah. every machine it's learning from. Yes, and to do that, we need that feedback loop um, and that connectivity, and even on a social aspect. Right now, we already have features in Canvas that, let's say Chris wanted to share with me the Captain Marvel print, he can share me a link, which I can then, it'll in, in my Canvas, it'll pop up. If I don't have his Canvas account, I'll make one. Otherwise, comes up. I can have his exact model painted with the exact printer settings, the exact slicer settings. If I had the same printer, I can just drop that in. No exporting, importing STLs. You can do all this in your phone. So long answer to say basically that um, Canvas is all about creating the simplest experience possible. So Mark, we would highly recommend giving Canvas a shot. It's one click, you slice, you send it over. Chroma is there because we also know that people love certain other slicers and we want to support that. So if you want to use S3D or Simplify or Cura, by all means do it. It just It's an experience where you have to export, import into Chroma, export, and if you got anything wrong there, it can lead to frustration. That's one of the. That's why there's. Such and a you're just trying to make it a one experience. Like let's put the model in, let's paint it, slice it, and we're done. Exactly. And I love um, the fact that at the end, slice, great, done, 
Send to Canvas Hub. Send to Canvas Hub. Exactly. No SD cards. Um, John, so uh, completely see the appeal. Um, I would suggest if, if Canvas is, is not doing it for you at this point, um, Chroma is there. Um, we are aware that there are crashes and it could be faster. So we're continuously working on that. We're not only working on new features in, in that. Stability is important. Making sure that we backfill to have all the features that people expect um, and that level of reliability and speed. So we're, we're making strides. I think, again, next year at this time, looking back at, at uh, where we are now, I think that we'll, well be listen, proud of listen, what we're going to do. Tell me, so, what, what year was the first year it came out with the palette? Uh, that was 2014. It's a small time here, folks. <laughs> like, and, and the leaps and bounds you guys have made and listened to the community honestly is, it's honestly ridiculous. It really is. And so 2014 is when the, when the company was founded, but the first pilot was actually 2017. So, uh, yeah, well, that's what I'm that. saying, right? That, yeah. you know, the company founded, then when you came on your first, that's, that's, that's a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. I have Wonder Woman loaded. Now, yeah. Shall I share the screen? Let's see it. All right. Let's see it. Here she is. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Hey. So things to notice. So this is actually something that I had written down as a feature request. Okay. I know this has got to be possible. <laughs> Say because the while we got you here, the Mitch. Change, the change <laughs> element, oh, believe me, I, I'm, I, I think I've already hit up Derek for this too. Um, but you've already incorporated the pause feature to change filament, like we talked about a little while ago. Right. The feasibility of adding more than four color options and having canvas. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Create that pause automatically when it's time to change colors, because. If you look at this, so I'm going to compare it. I know my screen is really small for me, but if you look, the first filament change happens. Where's my cursor? There it is. Um, so I have the marble and the skin tone right. set to one input. Okay. That makes sense. So yeah. that I did a filament swap on. Then blue and black. Again, same input. So that was a filament swap. And then um, red and white, because it's tough to see on this because the skin tone is so light, but her eyes actually are white. Uh, um, I love how you spent all the time painting. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I just, it I looks mean, so I, cool, man. I spent over eight hours painting this. Yeah, it looks oh. great. Huh? Um, but to see an option that you could actually add more input or more colors and let palette decide or let canvas decide where those need to go. Yep. Mm, uh, oh yeah. That would be yeah. A really, really helpful feature for things like this. Cause when I do these, I'm like, Oh my God, I got to set up. I, all right. So this is going to go in input one and then this goes yeah. first and then this goes. And then I, no, I have that, to line them up like a little bit in, in the right way because I, I have massive OCD when it comes to that. They have to be in the right spots so that the filaments aren't like crossing because it, yeah. Um, now I just want to say for the viewers, Chris is being super picky. <laughs> um, so, but did you, what did, do you want me to talk about anything particular about painting this? I mean, when you say painting, you don't mean using a paintbrush with paint. Oh no. Yeah. What do you want no, to see it? Let's click here on the model, and we're going to click right over here at the bottom, Paint Selected. So this was a single SDL, right? This yes, was this color. is um, Wonder Woman from uh, Eastman 3D. Eastman, single, yeah. Single color, SD, uh, single color. In fact, I could actually load it in a different thing. And I remember when I remember when you showed me this, and you're like, "Oh, I'm going to print it out," and I'm like, "Oh, yeah." And then you print, then you, then you, then you show me the print. I was like, oh, once again, I had palette envy. <laughs> I've never seen it take this long to analyze. This must be a huge, a very detailed model. It, oh, it, it is. No, no. I'm actually, so I've been talking to Derek the last couple of days because I've had like a really, really. Oh, you were long, saying that. That's like scary. long yeah. loading times? Yeah. I, I've had like 15 plus minute slicing. Wow. 
But at the same time, Eastman's, even if you import that stuff in that street, it it takes a second. You know what I mean? It's he, that's the way he designs. Yeah. Well, if that's going to take too long to load, we can temporarily go to my screen and then. Uh, All right. There we go. Okay. But when you're ready, Chris, let me know because that's a way cooler model. Uh, we're ready now. All right. You you share you and I'll bring you up. Let's do it. All right. Share Chrome tab. Oh, wait. It's up. Right. It's up. All right. All right. Hold on. See yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. We're good. So here we are. So now, a couple of the features that I love is the ability to paint very specific facets, use a sphere or a paint bucket. So what I tend to do is I'll outline things yeah. um, and then just use the paint bucket to fill them in. So if I wanted to add a heart tattoo right here, I'll go to the sphere and I'll use a really small one. And then a lot of people don't know if you hold down alt and left click, you can rotate. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Painting mod. Almost like a fusion 360 thing. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. yeah where it's yeah, like, yeah, better, yeah. Where it's like shift yeah. right click to rotate. Um, so yeah. So and wanna... once again, I want to remind all our, the people watching this stuff, this is not a multicolor print. This is, yeah, this literally, is a, this is a single paint. SDL. That's right. Yeah, that's my point. Thank you. Um, so if I want to, and I want to give her, uh, I probably should pick a different color. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. A little tattoo there. I want to give her a heart tattoo right here. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and I can just fill that in. Nice. Yeah. And, and then I would just print that way. Yeah, and when you slice that, I mean, it will obviously, it will smooth out those edges, but when you slice that, it will actually cut into the model, which is so huge compared to like doing this in Mesh Mixer, the way you used to Oh, have that's it. just doing the surface or whatever. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, this actually- yeah. And that's a big difference between putting it in the model and just on the surface. That's a big difference. And now I can just fill that Very right big difference. Undo, yeah, nice. you never even knew what happened. See, um, that- See, that's why, honestly, once again, uh, Chris has so much experience, but I've been following you guys from the beginning and what you've did. But just, I remember when you guys first announced being able to paint on a single STL. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think people realize how crazy that is. I don't <laughs> think they realize, like, yeah, that is insane. It's really insane. Um, oh, it's ridiculous. And the cool thing too is I'm not going to do it because it will take a really long time with this model, but the create regions was a big help in this model, especially around the eyes and in her hairline. So um, what does the create regions do? If you could explain it, just you I know you don't want to show it. Mitch, why don't you explain? Yeah. You know, create regions is, is one of those kind of magical things where I still don't fully get how it works, but it looks at the model and it, tries to guess certain areas that you might want to make a certain color. So for example, so what you want to fill in. Yeah. So here's a, a little bottle of eyeglass cleaner. Hey, I have that same bottle. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's going to look at this and it's going to say, okay, you know what? This here, that looks like a continuous geometry. It's looking at the relationship between the triangles and that surface. And it's going to say, okay, that seems like a constant surface. I'm going to create okay. a region. And then it'll do the same thing for this surface here and then the bottom. And so it makes it really easy because you create regions and then it might identify your lips, your nose, your foot, um, or if it's a less organic model, the side of your cell phone, or if it's a logo, it'll automatically split apart the different planes. And then you use the paint bucket tool and it's as simple, excuse me, as fast as paint, paint, paint. That model is so impressive that Chris painted because that's a fully organic model. Great regions would have a lot of trouble. So he had to actually go through and paint it manually. Each, like, everyone. Yeah. 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 And, and there's, there's tools for that, that like strategies like Chris was using. You do the outline, you fill it in. Um, you can do a yeah, yeah. big sphere and then a smaller sphere. But some models, like the other day I was painting um, a cool like little cell phone holder and I was able to automatically find the regions of, of the model and it makes it really fast. In fact, so I could just do each part quickly painting it. Exactly. Yeah, it takes a gotcha. little time. Um, yeah. So I actually sliced something up here. If um, I can, I can show yeah. you, kind of 
what you were explaining there. Here, let's see if I can share my screen here. Uh, Chrome tab, Canvas, Canvas. Can you right. see that? Yep. So I'm popping okay. it on. You don't, so have any, you don't have any porn up, do you? Because I'm going to share it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to share your whole screen, family, man. Family show. <laughs> we good. We good. <coughs> oh, nice. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So you can see this pink dog? Yeah. Okay. Um, random colors, but we just um, we painted some random polka dots on the dog, just as an example. So this was a single color STL. But I'm going to now scroll through the layers here to explain what we mean when we say the color goes in. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to get before. It's not just going on the outside layer, it's in the model. Exactly, so if we look at this layer here, we see that the outside of the dog would have these regions where you would see the dots, but Canvas is trying to make a really smooth tool path for the extruder so that the quality of the print looks good. So it's creating up these tool paths that go in, even on something really small like the leg of the dog here, it's optimizing that, um, and that's certainly and that may, and that totally makes sense. Instead of just to doing it on the outside, which would be so hard to change the tool path for like your color change, but you're filling in the whole part of that for a color, which makes I would imagine would make it a lot easier. Absolutely, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's fun. You're gonna give us more that down? that slice that slicing view was real cool, where you could see like each each spot going into the model, not just on the surface. Absolutely, yeah. Um, let's yeah. see, so yeah, we can you know, just add another dot there and a dot there. And yeah. There. <laughs> so, now if you so now if you went down those models, each of those red spots you just added are actually in the model. Exactly. So we could, once this guy slices, we'll be able to take a look at that. That's yeah, exactly. not just me. <laughs> I, was gonna, I wasn't gonna say nothing though. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. It gets faster. It's happening. It's yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, I remember when uh, you just had a few of us testing the new canvas. Yeah. It was like slice, and it would slice super fast, and then it would take like fifteen minutes to generate the preview. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, preview is always the worst. Yeah, the preview's definitely gotten much better on that. Um, oh, yeah, it's like instant now once the slice is That's not that bad. bad. Don't, oh, no, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. Yeah. Of course, this is slicing, but this is actually slicing like a quad extruder G-code. That's right. It, yeah, yeah. It's stitching it all. It's doing all that fun stuff. It Again, this- There's I, a lot of things that's calculating. Yeah. Again, yeah. we'll look back and we'll, we'll, we'll laugh. Uh, right now, it's great because it enables <laughs> us to do this, but uh, we can do a lot better. Okay, so here we go. So those dots yeah. that we just added, let's see what it yeah. just did in that minute. Yeah, and in that, that I'll see needed. right in the model. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And see, that makes that tool pass so much more reliable. It's, re it, you know. Yeah, yeah, because I used to do it. I remember when I first really wanted to try to start cutting my own models, um, I I talked to Derek and he was like, Oh, you use mesh mixer and you do it like this. And here I made a video on it and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. so it was painful because you only really have two options and the main option, like the best option, it just kind of slices the surface and it doesn't give it a solid tool path or anything really to grab onto the rest of the model. So, and that's it. And that's why those tool paths, a lot of times when you see color mixing, mixing stuff, it doesn't transition that well. Yeah. And that's why, like, I know, like, and I'll, I'll name Wexter as a great example. When he is cutting his models for multi-material, yeah, yeah. he goes deep in, you know, like, specifically, like, with the eyes and the mouth. He goes and the hair really and the hair yeah he goes really yeah. far into the head yeah so there's a nice solid tool path that the printer can just print you don't have to worry about overhangs you don't have to worry about the print like that one particular color all of a sudden printing in thin air yeah no you absolutely and it's, so. you're, you're bringing back memory actually so uh 3d printing revolution is commenting that and and you're right um, you can in mesh mixer you can color a surface but like you're saying wexter does you can also intrude that um, and find it. 
Um, but that will walk into Kill these dogs. Yes. Um, so yeah, using using Mesh Mixer to do those complex 3D geometry sort of definitions based on the external surface, uh, really complicated. You, usually your computer will crash or you have to do really small amounts at a time. Um, so yeah, Canvas for now is a little bit slow at that, but but it's uh, it's not as computationally intensive on, on your computer. In fact, you can do it on your phone uh, because your, your phone doesn't need to do the work. Yeah. The one thing I found though with doing that in Mesh Mixer, it creates an awful lot of like artifacts, model right? issues, artifacts, and you oh major uh, artifacts. You know where that doesn't happen in Canvas. So again, for ninety nine percent probably of palette users, this is the the best option ever. You know, yeah, I well, I think that, I think what a lot of people don't realize is in mix in mix mesh when you when you're changing the surface or or painting it, you're actually changing the surface. Yes, yeah, good point. Right, and I think that's what's different between the palette and like like what uh, he said is is, is yeah. painting on mix mesh. That's a whole different thing. It is. You're right. That's a super good point. Yeah. In fact, with canvas, you are not changing the geometry. We don't do that. Um, we're, uh, which, 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 yeah, it simplifies a lot of what's going on. Um, and then, uh, Cavionic is asking an interesting question too. So Chris, when you drew the heart, um, you commented that it's a bit, you know, it wasn't a smooth surface. And the reason for that, and the reason the dots on the dog weren't circles is because we are defining the color based on the triangles of the model right now. That's right. Yeah. Uh, right. So, uh, Cavionic's question is, uh, are you retesting the mesh or are you limited to the original triangle boundaries? So right now, the way Canvas works, we are limited to the triangle boundaries, um, but it's no secret. We've said that uh, we are deep, deep in development on on not doing that. Not necessarily retessellating, um, but another way of doing it so that you can have really freeform, smooth tools. And that'll be really exciting because you can really start to get- to Really that. painting it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or maybe, you know, artwork, patterns, really cool stuff that can make it really nice and easy. So um, that will be coming. Yeah, this is uh, Adam's question again right here. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll take that one if you don't want to. Um, so oh, no, right. you do not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you do not export anything. It doesn't create new models for you. It just slices based on the colors of the of that you've painted the triangles, basically. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much plain English. We yes, it, it, we can't even like um, because of what we were just talking about. The way Canvas is working, we're not breaking the model up. So if we were to export it, like Telly was saying, the, the geometry is not. It's the same model. That's um, so right, that's and that's why I was kind of get that point across. You're not changing the model. Yeah, so it would not be usable in any other slicer because there's no other slicer that's able to do what Canvas does. It could be useful in a video game. Like you could bring it into a video game <laughs> and then render it out because that's how video games work. Yeah, but got you with textures and stuff. Yeah, 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 for sure. Sense? Yeah. So it's not that we're trying to not let you export it. Um, so there's nothing to export. That's It's not different models, if that makes sense. That's right. <laughs> yeah, though. you're not trying to export a different model. You're just, you're, you're, you're just putting, you're just painting it. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. A um, couple of features. Let's talk about features in Canvas that I would love to see. Let's hear it. I'll write them um, down. So I actually mentioned this to Derek the other day too. Um, to be able to import uh, support files from Simplify 3D would be phenomenal. Like support material? No, support files. So Simplify 3D, when you generate custom supports, yeah, you can actually export those. Oh. As a that's right file wait why can't yeah. you import that then because a canvas doesn't support importing support files is it not an stl <laughs> no it's not an stl it's, it's actual, not an stl no it's no, not, it's not, not no no file. what, um, what is, how are they defining the support do you know i, I have no idea magic it is magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not writing their algorithm, right? <laughs> um, so I don't know, but he assured me that there is work being done. Oh yes, there is. Um, that I, I know we probably can't discuss. Well, I keep hearing that. I keep hearing 2020 is the year. It's well, the right. year, right? Look well, at that smile on his face. I'm not going to say I don't know things. I'm just saying we yeah. can't discuss things here. 
I know um, Mitch has got a big smile when I say 2020. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, 2020. Luck. I turned 50. That's right. Yeah. Have we? Have you guys taken that in yet? The like 2020 kind of felt far away, but like next oh, month, it's going to be ridiculous. Like, Mitch, I'm going to be like twice your age. Um, well, I'm, dude, I'm going to be 50 in January. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's Mitch's fault. <laughs> I didn't say it was. Um, okay, so there's that. Um, a really, really important thing to me, and this is a big reason I sometimes choose to use S3D over Canvas. Yeah. yeah. Control over top and bottom layers individually. Mm. Um, that does make sense, yeah. Because I do, so let's go back to my clocks as a great example. Yeah. When I design them, I, di I design them for a multicolor printing. So I'll design them in such a way that the entire bottom piece is printed in, say, one color, if, if possible, sure. depending on the model or the design. Um, and then I will add color later on top of it. Now, for me, I don't need top layers on, say, That's the right. base color. That's right. I don't yeah. need bottom layers on the upper colors on the opposite uh, side i can save myself hours of print time totally by using s3d and chroma over canvas mm. so for me and i'm sure for a lot of other people that would be a really big deal yeah yeah totally um so there's that and then um another it's another feature of simplify 3d but being able to, so in Simplify 3D, I don't know if you've ever actually really used it. I'm I assuming. Have, yeah. um, I don't and, know if you've ever used it. <laughs> well, some, some people never have used it. Okay. It yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Come um, on now. Let's get real. <laughs> so align model origins. Now, I know when you import, so in Canvas, yeah. I take a uh, section a group of model a group of stls that are multi-material and i drop it in the multi-material side yeah it automatically does it what if i wanted to do that with models like if i wanted to so a lot of times like so these wexter models for example so this is his superman but i just designed a quick base for him to stand on okay so that involves me because i wanted to slice it in canvas that involved me going into Fusion, dropping all of his meshes into Fusion, making sure everything was aligned properly, designing everything around it, and then re-exporting all of the files together so I could drop them into Canvas so they would pop in the right location. Yes. Oh, so they combined. Oh, yeah. okay, gotcha. Yeah. As opposed to just saying, okay, well, I'm gonna just create this in the center and drop this in the center, and then this is going to drop right on top of it, and bang, it's exactly where I need it to be. Oh, I understand. Okay. Yeah, like joining together. So, so you with me? So are you I've, with me? I've never done that in S3, in Simplify 3D. You can basically align the XY position of the models? Yes. How does that work? Well, you, it, well you, no, you don't align the XY, but basically what how that would work would be you drop a model in, it's going to drop smack in the middle of the, of the bed. Okay. And then you drop other models in as long as they're aligned and they'll drop smack in the middle of the bed. So okay. this again is the example. I know this is five millimeters thick. Yeah. This is now centered on top of this. I just uh, okay. raised this entire model up five oh, millimeters and it's exactly where I need it. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So something like that. Yeah. I see the application. All right, we got a we we got a question here on the S. What changed on the homing switches? Was it move Was it moving the switch closer to the PCB mount screws? Do you see that in there? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, there we go. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Thank you. The position of the switch was adjusted. I don't have a pallet in front of me right now. I'm trying to think. Um, I believe Obviously, it was yeah, yeah. away from in the direction away from the filament basically making it less susceptible to the filament, applying pressure on it, breaking it over time. Uh -huh. yeah. um, that change was actually implemented a little bit ago. So some people already had that updated switch, um, but we made sure with the S that everyone got it. Um, they can get it, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, and uh, yeah. Yell at me, sir. My awesome. cat's yelling at me. 
Let me know if that's what you're asking, Kavionic, about like. I think I, I think that's what he was asking. It sounds exactly what he was asking. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um. All right. Oh, we got uh we got Jeff Wicks asking a question there, Chris. Ooh. Turn yeah. off or saying something or saying something. You don't need to think about aligning faces. Oh, designers. You got to love designers when it comes to painting and talking about models, right? Yep. He's right, though. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, he is right. No, no, he is. You know, he's, you know, no, it's not that he's not making a valid point. Well, that's why. That's what I was saying. So I took, in order to do that the easy way for me, I literally just dropped all of the mesh files into Fusion. Yeah, yeah. They were already aligned, and then I created the base around it exactly where it needed to be, and then I just exported all of those STLs again yeah, and just yeah. dropped them all into Canvas, and that's where they were. Yeah. Oh, I look mean, at but, look but at then again. Though. Oh yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, Ivy. Oh, what? The answer is yes. Uh, let me let me let me explain. So the answer is okay. yes. Oh, damn. Mitch, you tell me. Yeah. Nothing that is tell even Mitch. Know. But but <laughs> you know that uh, there are options. So uh, first of all, um, we're always trying to make palette more accessible. So you've actually seen the price of the functionality of palette has gone crazy up, and then the cost has been coming down. That is true. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, we can do that because with that happening, more people are buying it, which means we can buy in bulk and, and uh, all of our resources can be split better. So investing in something like Canvas is that much more beneficial. So lots of good stuff going on there. Um, so you know, in the future, we'll hope to make even more accessible versions of Palette. But today, Palette 2, um, there's a lot of those in the world. Something that happens pretty frequently is someone will buy a Palette and then they'll be like, ah, I didn't read that it's not compatible with my printer. Uh, and then it'll become a refurbished palette. A lot of these palettes haven't even been opened. But legally, it's our responsibility. We need to um, sell them as refurbished. That's right. So, yeah, that's right. right? Yeah. So a palette, uh, a palette 2 is, I believe, uh, four ninety nine. dollars But a refurbished USD? palette. USD? USD. USD. Yeah, so okay. three ninety nine USD for what is refurbished. So it's either effectively brand new or it's been opened. Yeah. But then we yeah. recertified it, ran it through all quality checks again, repacked it. Um, yeah. You're getting basically a brand new palette two for three ninety nine. So that's effectively the most accessible palette that there's ever been. Um, and uh, if you want one, there. Dude, I'll send you my address. Just send one of those yeah. over. I didn't even know what palette was at the beginning of the week. <laughs> um, she's actually a friend of mine. Oh, nice. Um, and she messaged me the other day and was like, Hey, I'm trying to do this. What I need, I'm looking for like a dual extruder and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Pallet. And she's like, What? And... Pallet? What's Pallet? And I just ran into my shop and I just started taking pictures because I had all these models running. And oh, I'm like, this, for today, this, yeah. This. I'm like, Just call me. So we ended up talking and I was like, Oh, yeah, Mosaic's right in Toronto and blah, blah, blah. And then I was telling her about the refurbished and all that good stuff. So can yes, you? It is so, so horrible for Canadian pricing. I under, I I agree though. Is there any uh, secrets you can let out? Fault. What's up for the future, Mitch? What's going on? Come on, you keep saying 2020. Is there anything you could tell us? Anything? Is there anything I can tell you? I, I totally come on. Like, something. You gotta give me something here. I mean, maybe we can just play a game of like looking at past mosaic behavior and predicting. You know, you, we said yeah. it before. We we listen to to customers. What are customers asking for? What well, do I see want, Chris? about. I don't know. It must have been six months ago or nine months ago. There was a question poll going around by oh, Mosaic. Yeah. I think. I oh yeah, that. Johnny actually posted that. Yeah, I've um, seen it. Yeah, yeah. Asking. Uh, you know, would you be willing to pay more for more inputs? And oh. how, how much more would you be willing to pay for versus how many inputs? I would be willing to pay more for more inputs. I would also be willing to pay more for the ability to take two palette twos <laughs> and connect them to my T-Rex. Yeah. Oh, see, now that so would be nice. Effectively having eight colors. Yeah. Right. Eight colors, yeah. Or eight materials. I could have seven colors and support, you know, 
Yes. That is an epic game changer. Nobody has that. Right. Well, here here's the other thing. And you know, I'm just we're since we're talking about just stuff, what about two inputs into one or even if you can have for have an RGB system, so where there's a color mixing, oh, I can see them shaking. So that does so you can have the basic colors, but make a massive amount of colors just with four types of different filaments. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I mean, saying. If anybody yeah. can do that, I really. Oh, you that. guys will. Yeah, yeah, no, you yeah. Know, for sure. And I'm going to tell you from experience. Okay, when I was working for a 3D printing shop. Um, they got in, I mean, I did a lot of their YouTube videos and I got, um, I'm going to out the company, the M3D crane. Right. Oh, right. Oh, let's not, let's all, oh, okay. Not yeah. Talk poorly of the company okay. because I will tell you the customer service that I got through the first, probably 80% of it was fantastic. Um, they jumped through a lot of hoops, but in the end it still didn't work. Yeah, um, that's right. Like this was the only thing I actually burned my finger ridiculously badly Ugh. on an SD card. What? Because it's burning so much for those color changes, because right? It's constantly they, writing to the SD. No, but it wasn't even that. <laughs> it, I hadn't even used it yet. I just built it. Apparently, because what they do, because these have Duet Maestro boards in them. Yeah. So they ship them with the SD card in the machine. So it must have gotten jogged somehow, and it must have fused something when I heated the machine. I like how he's trying time. to be nice. He's I'm like, trying to be oh, nice. well. I'm trying to be nice and be logical about it. <laughs> it must have fused something when I preheated the machine, and it so it wouldn't do anything. So I went to pop the SD out. I was looking at the troubleshooting, and it said, okay, turn the machine off and remove the SD card. So I turned the machine off. I touched the SD card with my middle finger. Yeah. I still have, you probably can't see it, a little line scar. Can't see it. Burn I got from the SD card. It was ridiculous. Um, I, I love that close up view of your middle finger. Yeah, my middle way. finger here. <laughs> yeah. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yeah, I could see it. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I, I think they had a great idea. Um, not really good. Well, execution. listen, uh, even look at the price right now. I, I will not talk about a bad, about bad, about companies. I'll give my own personal opinion. Well, that was my look first at the experience. Look That's at the I, price. I, I, look okay. at the price that they're charging. It, it's in, it's insane. Yeah, and so honestly, like you said, it's energy. honestly for something that doesn't work. And that's yeah. really the end, uh, you know? Yeah. But I feel like if anybody could actually design that, I, oh no! Listen, I, I know hey, if you know if you made it work correct. Yeah, shit eating grin, like what? We already have one. I, know. I just have yeah. I know. Yet. Look, I know he's like, don't worry, twenty twenty. <laughs> Everything in twenty twenty. No color mixing is color mixing is cool. It's I'm really up in the office on Monday. Just so you know now. Sorry, I'm gonna show up the office and search it on Monday. Start, start looking. Uh, yeah, no color mixing is cool. To be honest, I I personally think that. You know, getting to something like 16 colors would be like one color, two colors, four color. It really is exponential. 16, though, gets us so close. Sorry, sorry, it's not exponential. It's it's, it's the opposite. Um, you reach a um, an awesome Yeah, 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 exactly. So um, if we think about the potential of where people are today, there's there's things that have to catch up. Like the models out there, Canvas is helping people create better content. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we need to. That'll we'll eventually have to step change that as well because you won't want to paint a 64 color model manually, right? No, you won't. No, yeah, that's Speaking right. Speaking of that, that was actually a question that I had. So yeah. I was uh, talking to uh, David Osman, uh, Eastman 3D. So he actually, his, his Wonder Woman model, his Captain America, which we all know is my favorite model ever. Yes. Um, what is the possibility of Canvas being able to read vertex colors in an STL? Because if that's the case, if that's something that could be done, so many modelers, I mean, I'm just speaking as like a super like noob when it comes to vertex colors because I don't know a lot about it. But 
if that color information is already existing in the STL, could Canvas use it and already assign colors so there's really no need for painting? Right, right. Well, well speaking as a random person, not, not as a representative of a mosaic, like we were saying before, we're, we're, we're using the geometry, we're defining color on the surface, so it would seem reasonable that if we could translate the vertex color to a surface color, then that should be doable, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And that's cool because then you have thousands of models out there that are from video games and stuff or, you know, that could be used directly, so. Yeah, um, direct, yeah, that's, that's right. Really cool. Now I was gonna see earlier, and I know Ivy, I know, listen, it's not their fault that our Canadian dollar and our exchange rate is so horrible. It's, it's not. It, it's not. It's not mistakes' fault, right? It's just they, they bl blame the government. It's not. They they, they 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 charge a price. The exchange rate sucks. <laughs> yeah. Jeff says use UV texture maps. I don't care what we use if it works. Yeah. yeah. No, I think there's there's many equivalent forms. So um, I think I think that's in the roadmap to to use better use formats that are already out there because with strong formats come large communities of, of great content. That's right. So agree 100%. That's important. Uh, back to yeah. number of colors for a second. So Chris, you're right. We did send out a survey and let's, let's ask you live here. Like um, assuming that more colors is going to be more motors and, and more expense. So you wouldn't want to just say, I want a hundred. Like what is that nice balance where you've got enough for support, enough for colors, enough for backup filaments. So that let's say you're five or six primary colors. If some of them run out or the end of the spool, you can have extra ones for backup spools. What's that magic number for you that you want? In reality, I would so like yeah, to eight. Eight. See, I was thinking six to be honest with you. I mean, six, six colors. Because I can't think of a lot of models that need, and here, like I was saying before, for me, honestly, because uh, we're talking about the the MDO with the 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 RGB CMT color mixing, yeah. you don't need sixteen inputs to make right. that many colors. True, sure. right? If you could use four to six inputs, and once again, we're just talking, but have those percentages where, you know, you can make each colors. You don't need, uh, you know, 16, 18 inputs. You need four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Just pause. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Dave just had a real quick question. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Uh, Canvas is at its heart. Uh, a really strong slicer, something that's been around for about eight years and hardened. That's the core of Canvas. So we built this multi-material, multi-color layer around it, but Canvas is free, uh, pretty easy, like very easy to use. It's um, really easy to use. I actually really like the settings. There's a lot of settings and a lot of options, but it's not overwhelming. Like there's not 1,000 options. Right. Yes, that's important to the Canvas team to expose enough, but not too much that it becomes, you know, way too overwhelming. Um, yeah. Five, make sure you include white, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you did the and color, see, mixing, and, you would have to do five because you have to include white. That's yeah. right. And see, and, uh, and Jeff Wicks has a great, you know, honestly has a great point, you know, CMF, uh, CMYK, five, you know, you include white, you you can you do every spectrum, right? Yeah, you and, can do you know, every color. Yeah. Um, I, I, have you guys seen the stuff that Jason Proust does with the lithophanes? Totally, right? Yeah. Well, that, Telly's all, like, he's all lithophane. That's okay. Like, I'm a lithophane. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a perfect case where the colors aren't mixing, but the light is mixing them when you look through it. So that's, that's getting you right. Sense that if you could print with, like, a point two millimeter nozzle and you could get that effect on the full surface of the model, that could be a really cool way to achieve... C M Y K W B. The same difference. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Dave. Dave, you don't download it. You just create an account and use it. Yeah, yeah, you that's right. Yeah, phone, yeah. You can log in at a friend's house. You don't need to download anything. Yeah. So, but yeah. Okay. So, so to Jeff's point. Um, yeah. 
would we see a color mixing CMYKW? 2020. <laughs> or Well, actually, no. Well, yeah, I guess you would need black. So, yeah. So, would you see a five-color mixing palette, whatever you want to call it, something? <laughs> something. <laughs> Not, no trying time. to get fancy, yeah. and I got nothing. Yeah, I know. No I know. Poor Mitch is like, I don't know what to tell you guys, all right? <laughs> I can't answer you. Yeah. Well, I told him we were going to ask him all these questions, and he didn't have to answer them. No, no, no. That's true. No, 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 it's no, all that's good. No, no color mixing coming anytime soon, but we do think it's a yeah. So, because I mean, you. But I, at I, the I, same I, time, though, you did say you are working. You are working on different things like the purge block. So yes. you have multiple prints. That's all going to be the same purge block. So you have the same purge block for a full plate. Or for one printer you guys are doing things to like you know work on you know you, you guys know that there's nothing's perfect and you're just trying to keep on working towards that yeah Definitely. I mean, just to be honest again i'm going to show these again if you want to print something that looks this cool i know right what, what are you going to do it, and not it, well that's what you got to pay and not only that you know? You're and not if, stuck for one print, printer. You can move it to any printer. Exactly. If I printed this on my S5, I could have printed four of them in this single purge block. This wouldn't have changed. That's what I like. That and that and I think that's what some people need to realize. They just think about one model and that one big purge block. But if you printed six or ten, then it's yeah. actually not that much waste. I mean it's not this, that much waste. This is the purge block for Superman. Right. Yeah. It's honestly about the same weight. It may be slightly heavier, but there's a lot of these colors. So this is all just red. So Yeah, but if you printed no 10 of those out, that block exactly. is the exact same size. This block is the same size. I could have I could easily fit probably 12 of these plus this block on my S5. And I think that's something that people need to realize because they just think of one model, this big purge block. So yeah, and I mean, you're printing multiple of those models. It's the same. It's not like it, the print box any bigger. You're wasting any more material. You know, yeah. it's less. It's less. You, you can just make these. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Thug life. Thug <laughs> life. <laughs> That's awesome. And this was the first block. Right. Yeah. Tiny. It weighs almost nothing. But let's be legit. Look at that white black separation. Nice. Looks good. Clean. Yeah. This yeah, is actually, I, I did a test just to test out what Addy was helping me with. Nice. Oh, that was the thing. Yeah. yeah. So just to really get that separation of color. Yeah. So it's, uh, it, was, it was the advanced, um, like the advanced, advanced transition section. Yes. The uh, per material transition. Yeah. 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 Uh, var variable transitions. Yeah. And uh, the Madden Makery, a, a couple other really cool. So purge to infill, that's already part of Canvas. Um, a purge block, a purge object. So let's say you want to print, you know, a Lego block or some other part as your tower so that it's actually a, a toy for your kids or something like that. Uh, that will be coming. And there's a bunch of other things we're working on. And the reason it's so important is because the cool thing about a change in canvas is that there's hundreds of palette prints happening every day. If we save 1% of waste for all of them, that multiplies it's amazing. so fast forever. Yeah. So that's why we're prioritizing it. But again, every time we do something, because there are so many people using it, we we want to have a reputation for being uh, having really high quality product and it being stable. So we have to test everything like crazy. And we're really fortunate to have a great use of uh, a great group of Facebook mods who are product testers. And Chris was even helping us out today, which is awesome. And um, no, it was yesterday. I'm gonna say again, Mitch. Hey, right. check me out right here. Yeah. So, Mitch, I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna bring up this comment right here. Yeah. All right, should we have an auction? I'm not exactly oh, sure. Oh, that's I'm, my I'm buddy. Sure. He, he's from Australia. If you know who Jeff Wicks is. Mm. Have you heard of Hex 3D? Hex but not only that, honestly, he's one of the biggest uh, designers on Thingiverse for the yeah. longest time, man, for the longest time. So you're saying that Jeff needs a palette ASAP. Oh, that guy Jeff needs might need one. a palette. 
All right. Yeah. He does amazing models. He's one of the best designers yeah, well, here, out look, there, honestly. Let me uh where did this come? Here, I got lots of, I got lots of stuff here. Once look, I'll be right see, back. See that Colossus? Uh where am I looking? Look at his icon. Ah, uh, yes, yes. On the chat on the comment. Like the on the screen on the, the big yeah, comment yeah, on the yeah. screen. Yeah, That's yeah, one of his. In fact, I have that model printed out. All right, there we go. Oh, oh here we go. Wow. Oh, the dent. <laughs> Every nice little detail on there. He's a great designer, honestly. Wow. Well, so we're actually we're Jeff is probably going to be a guest on the show. Nice. Yeah, he although, certainly will be. Yeah. He apparently lives in the bush in Australia, so oh, we have to man. do a test stream to make sure his internet can handle it. He's kind of, yeah, no. yeah, he's kind of a big like deal. literally like four days ago. He didn't even know if his whole property was going to burn down because he was right by all those oh, yeah, Australian right fires. Australia. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. But he made it. He made it back home. Yeah, and uploaded models like a champ. Yes, Ivy, I do love you, but I don't get to make that decision. Well, if the three of us agree right. that, Jeff, that Jeff needs a pallet, I guess we can get well, Jeff a pallet. What well, no, I'm looking at Ivy's comment right here. <laughs> I do love you, but that's not up to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, if we can, yeah. Now, he's like, if we could convince my wife, isn't that always? <laughs> Every time I get a new printer, my wife just does this. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Okay. Yeah, Where's that one going? <laughs> and yeah. I don't blame her. Don't Are get me wrong. Keeping this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I get now. Is that for review or are you oh, keeping that one? Oh my god, that's so funny. Are you keeping this I don't one? Know. I know that's great. Depends yeah, how good great. it is once I do the review. That's what I always say. Well, maybe we'll if it's real good, we'll keep it. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you that review I just did of the Einscan SE man. I want one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that scanner. Yeah, I know. Oh, that was pretty sick. So, Mitch, what else do you want to tell us? I know tell we're, us something. We are, we're leaning well past our allotted time. I know. I was going to say. And, yeah. and, I, and yeah. I, honestly, Mitch, we appreciate you hanging out with us, man. It's it's really cool. Yeah, it's, you're, our you're the number one guest, man. Number one. You are. You are our first guest. Yeah, that's it, brother. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. it big time, man. So, what else? What are you going to say? Give us an end note or something like mosaic fucking rock. Sorry, excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, we covered a lot of it. Um, we did. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there's going to be some Black Friday stuff coming up. Oh, so, Ivy. Yeah. All right. Black Friday. Yeah. Ivy, Black Friday. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always am, like I'm bad at that. I think people are better than this than me. I always forget to like go online for filament and new printers I want and stuff like that. Black Friday's yeah. in 3D printer land, so um, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that. My wife and I go on Amazon for like three weeks before Black Friday, especially because I'm American and I'm used to it. Um, and we just like well, Neil has same day pickup. Let's get real. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> guy, yeah, it's ridiculous. Only and it's delivery, sir. Order by <laughs> noon, received by nine. Crazy, That's not the ridiculous. best though. <laughs> you guys oh, it me. is the best. I wish I had that. Um, but it's yeah, rough. we we start looking weeks before, and then we just check on Amazon. Oh, what's this? What's this? Bang, ordered, done. Yeah. No. So you're getting on a plane here. We'll have it oh, when you when you leave him. So I'm leaving uh, tomorrow afternoon, going to Iceland, connecting to Frankfurt, wow. Germany. Go to uh, uh, Form Next, a really big 3D printing additive manufacturing trade show. So cool. lots to report. We should have done this next week so I could show you all the crazy stuff that that um, that we see. Well, uh, we're yeah. always happy to have you back. <laughs> That's right. We are we're happy to have you back from. for sure. Thank you. Thank you. I'd love to. Um, yeah, no, I think let's do it again this time next year so we can be accountable. So, to Mitch can be all in. Yeah. So, so, you could be, so, you, so you could do like you said. Oh, do you remember last year, guys, yeah. when we were talking about that? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And then we'll talk about it. All right. Well, we'll, we'll hold you to that then. We'll hold you to that one let's year from today. Let's do it. No, seriously. We've got um, – think about all the stuff. Think about how far we've come from – 
in the past year and a half, Palette 2 and Palette 2 Pro came out, Canvas, the Canvas Hub, that ecosystem, that experience is getting there. We're, we're thinking about that step change from Palette to Palette 2. We're going to keep on pushing, uh, making that better. And, you know, Canvas, you'll continue to see these things coming out. And with Palette, like you're seeing the upgrade and additional functionality coming out, um, you know, it's going to take time for us to get to your CMYK, but we'll get Yeah, that's eight, right. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. By 800 Core XY machine. I mean, what? Yeah, I know. Listen, you can't make everyone happy all the time, but you I guys know. are doing great things, honestly. You right. really are. Okay, before we go, I just have a couple things. Um, so two weeks from tonight, we uh, have we have Mitch knows him, Sean Connolly. Sean Connolly. That's awesome. Sean is be our guest. Uh, we're calling the show The Man Behind the Nerd. Yes. That's right. The um, man behind and, the nerd, and guys. You can also attest like what a nice, nice, like super nice guy Sean That's is. Right, right. Um the man the man gonna, behind the three pre nerd. It's gonna be he's amazing. Really, really talented. He's great. Um, so and he's like he's so, he's such a talented I don't wanna I, I don't know, is cinematographer the right word? Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or filmographer, I don't know. So um, an editor like he's so talented. i'm super excited because he is in the background a lot and he you know not that he doesn't get enough credit but you know what i mean it'll be cool it'll be credit. really i know okay i was trying to be nice all right <laughs> um so sean's gonna be with us in two weeks and um after that uh we haven't actually confirmed the date specifically but wexter should be our guest right yeah i Christmas. think he should um, be, yeah. Just depends on his schedule. He's going to be a guest. Hopefully, it will be right before Christmas. And we then love that, yeah. Another really cool idea that we had was um, some things that people ha find really a challenge that I find a challenge, and I don't do it because it's such a challenge, fitting helmets and armor for myself. That's right, yeah, yeah. So my friend Joe, who runs Joe Lamb Props, is amazing yeah, at doing yeah. this and he's in uh, alberta he's going to join us and show us the tools he uses to scale his Fit all your stuff so, yeah to that's going to be a great stuff. episode so yeah that's going to be a really great episode and also yeah. uh after that probably first of the year ron the owner of filaments.ca has yeah. agreed yeah. to come on and be a guest Heck so yeah. that's and what we have after going that, on. that we're going to have we're jeff wicks. wicks and then that's we're going to get it. jeff wicks on yeah, and we're going to get david it. osman on um, oh, Osman. We got to convince him, though. And uh, <laughs> and then one other note is my on my channel, which is linked at the bottom. Um, now he's giving away a printer, have, folks. Uh, a printer giveaway that's nearing a close. I need about 100 more subscribers, and that printer is giving away gone. See ya. That's so it. log in, check that's that out. That's the i3 Mega, right? It's the, uh, it's the, uh, the i3 Mega S. Oh, even better. Nice. Tight yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a great so, little printer. Um, so that's it. I'm gonna say we're done. Mitch. All right, I'm gonna say Thank follow you. me at Idea 3D Gifts Instagram. Links Mitch, on the thank, Mitch thanks so much for being here, brother. In the bottom. Yeah, and thanks box, for being here. I really appreciate there. it. Yeah, especially I didn't even realize you were going away when we had asked yeah, you yeah. Night, and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mitch. Thanks for having me. I learned a lot, and I learned a lot tonight, so I really do appreciate it. I'm glad. This was right. fun. And thank you, everyone, for watching us. We appreciate that too. All right, I am going to end the broadcast. Mitch, hang around for a second. For sure. Good night, guys. Good night. Later.